at Southampton Water at Weston. It's um, Saturday the 23rd of February. At noon. At noon. Well, exactly noon, in fact. Yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> and? And? Who are you? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm Dick. Uh, I'm Peter. And this is... I'm Ollie. Ollie. Um, Ollie Atchum, and I uh, have my own channel, which is Drawing Board 82, and uh, I'm excited to be here with these gents today testing Woodstock. And Ollie has done his own autopilot for a full-size uh, launch, haven't you? Yes, with some form of success. That, that, that was, <laughs> that's on yeah. YouTube as well. So. Yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah. If you, if you. So. On the uh, on the audio. Um, here we go. You happy to go from here then? Yes, but go around in a circle first. So, here we go. Right, well, it's, it's going directly against the uh, oncoming wave, isn't it? Why is it doing that? The wind speed is four and a half, uh, three point eight, four point naught. So pretty slow. It's got a speed over ground of 0.4 mph. <laughs> but it is, it is actually it's making some progress. Uh, this uh, Ollie talking to a member of the public. So, with the wind from the south east, we made slow progress out towards P1 until at this point we decided to tack because we were just sailing too close to the wind. This is when we discovered an error in the logic because we decided to tack on a course of 218 and at the point we made that decision we were already very nearly outside the green corridor during within which we're supposed to be tacking so it would have been better to choose the other beat which would be 98 degrees in order to stay within the green corridor but we the algorithm that chooses which angle to tack on doesn't pay any attention to where the boat is at the time so it chose this 218 angle and uh, therefore went outside the green corridor and that then caused a second problem because because it was outside the corridor it stopped paying attention to the cross track distance and although the cross track distance got enormously much bigger than the uh, 15 meter width of this corridor it just went on and on until it would have gone to all the way to Australia um, had it not eventually got into a position here where it decided that it could uh, sail directly to P1 uh, tried to turn through the wind, couldn't do so, did an auto jibe and came back. Then it decided to tack again back out on 218 because it's still, and this is a feature of the locking of the tacking direction, it still thinks it's uh, on the 218 tack. So that was a bit of a waste of time. Then it went, it repeated this several times until eventually. Well, each time it's getting closer to P1, isn't it? Eventually it got into P1. There. So that was not proper tacking. And it, it, it involved two errors in the software which have got to be corrected. So we, we actually got into P1 and we're going for P2 now. And I still can't see the boat for anything. Where it is, I know not. 
So here we have Peter adopting the uh, pinhole camera technique from the 1900s uh, because uh, rather inconveniently from the point of view of our footage there's a, there's a gigantic uh, nuclear explosion <laughs> which means you can't read his viewfinder. So we got into P1 and then we tacked in a satisfactory way to P2 which we just missed by a smidgen and so we had to double back to get into P2 then we tacked to P3 again overshot it double back and then we were able to sail normally onwards like this beautifully really So it's about 13.15 and uh, we stopped off P5 heading to P6. Um, and this is my first time actually seeing a uh, stop in Athens and I don't want to fix it but it looks, uh, it looks like it's uh, working exactly as per design. Um, and uh, so it's a heavy waypoint and uh, you know these are not the easiest conditions. There's a current um, going from left to right um, approximately I think around about point So here we are tacking from P2 to P3 and sailing uh, into the sun. The helmsman is just trying to hold a steady heading for the boat and you can see he's using quite a lot of the frequent rudder movements possibly because there's so much pitching going on here uh, as the boat is heading into the waves that uh, that produces slight movements on the compass perhaps not necessarily um, genuine movements because to my mind th there's rather more rudder movement going on here than uh, I would like to see At this point we try to turn full to port in order to turn through the wind but all we succeed in doing is luffing up and losing uh, boat speed. So that will continue until an auto jibe comes into effect. So that's the start of the auto jibe. We centralise the rudder for 20 seconds to let the boat speed pick up again. And then we slam on full opposite rudder, starboard rudder in this case. And uh, hope that the boat will rotate clockwise. Which it is doing, albeit slowly. So now we're back on the other tack and off we go. So 
here we're sailing downwind uh, between P7 and P8 and also instead of uh, sailing into the oncoming waves we're going with them so we have a more tranquil time but you can see that the jib doesn't get much uh, uh, of a look in because it's uh, masked by the mainsail. I think we're going at 1.2 MPH at this point. So now we've got both sails working okay in the goose wing configuration. Rather late in the day I decided to launch the drone to see if we could get some pictures of the boat when it's further from the shore. I think it's tacking here from P14 to P15 so it's very nearly got uh, back to the start. Uh, just changing its uh, beat there. At some point something went seriously wrong with the gimbal stabilisation on the drone. Uh, it seemed to be stuck at about 45 degrees. I can't believe the wind was that strong that the drone would be at that angle. I evidently need much more practice at filming uh, from this drone. I'm about five, five meters above the water, I think. At one point, uh, a sailing boat came quite close to us and we thought it might collide, but it turned out to be all right. So we got to P13, tacked between P13 and P14, tacked between P14 and P15, okay, and then we went back to the shore. We were tacking to base two, which is a bit further up the beach, and uh, Ollie decided to take radio control so that Dick can uh, recover the boat. taking the mast off and it's going to take the top off the boat to see what the water ingress situation but hopefully it won't be too much skewed by the fact that there was water in the groove between the top side and the hull that we forgot to remove before opening the screws. If we did tip it to get the water out of the groove what we do is to move the water around inside so yeah. we don't know if there is any water in the exactly. coming in. Yeah, yeah, got you. Yeah, we're ready. Let's... Well, normally there's some in the centre there. Uh, oh, well, we've got a lot in the bows here. Yeah? Okay. Oh, oh, wow, there is actually. Yeah, but um, that, you see, could have come. And there's that well, and then the yeah, in not. the next bay as well. Is that seat through there? From there. there. So this could all have come from the deck. Yeah. 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 Except... Actually, quite a lot here now, isn't there? Look at the amount there. Yeah. So if that went down there, that would be as much as that. So I don't think we can learn anything. What we're going to have to do is try to go. 
Euro or something in here with a light. But whilst it's yes. we want one in India. So, this was the first full trip in the sea for which we had to intervene with the radio control, not at all. So, we deemed it a good success, albeit finding two new software problems to look at. So, we repaired for a late full English breakfast at Piggy's restaurant in Woolston. Thanks very much for watching.